because you know these uh, first hours, uh, it's, it's always going to be about time awareness. So one more time, so you have a better reference of uh, what we are going to be training every hour, and actually every hour of every training we give is about time awareness. And the thing is, basically, we use, uh, you know, um, let's say all the the way we communicate uh, 24 hours a day yeah? and that's specifically specifically what we are training it's not something abstract that uh, actually anybody created like for example in the time world uh, a very good way to find out what is an abstraction that somebody invented or not is that for example if you go on the street and you do this to somebody, they don't know what the heck you want. See? Right? So, if in tango awareness you do something, you gesture and you do something like this, human beings know what you want. So that's one of the main, main, main difference of what tango awareness is. Uh, with respect to all the tango technique that some of you uh, have used uh, so far. Uh, you're walking in front of each other and let me show you, uh, let's say I'm walking on the street, right? I'm not dancing tango and you see somebody walking the following way, like this. What do you think? Do you think it's tango awareness or kind of weird tango? Do you think that's it look normal to you? No. Not at all, right? It looks actually it looks really weird. It looks really weird. Even when you are dancing, for example, if you have your partner and you keep staring at your partner like this, you know, and you're turning, and you're turning and you do this, you know, to any human being in this planet, it looks very weird, right? If you're having a conversation with somebody in a coffee place and you're sitting, see, we don't look, human beings, we don't look at each other like this. See, we don't look like this when we want to understand each other. See, we use all our sight. See, looking like this, it has to do with computers, but not with human beings. Even if you're in love, see, you don't look at each other like this. See? So, the game is, now, let's do the... Uh, Let's go do what we did before. See, we walk, and the only thing you cannot look at is your partner. Okay? So, this is how it goes. In the other of town, in the other of town. If I catch you looking at your partner, you'll see. <laughs> That's it. Yeah? Is it cool? Not this. <laughs> weird, huh? So these things that uh, we are doing, uh, t taking to account this, all these exercises that, that you are doing, I see, for example, some followers uh, fixing up your your feet, for example, you start. You think you started with the wrong foot, and sometimes you change it and you fix it. Well, that fixing thing is wrong by default, because huh? what we are doing in this class, you have to understand that your body knows ten times more than you. Yeah. So this exercise we are doing right now is so you can learn from yourself. So if you keep fixing stuff, 
Actually, you're fixing stuff that is good. Eh? You are creating mistakes by trying to fix things. So when you start walking, I don't care which leg you're walking in. Yeah? So let me show it to you one more time. Uh, th this exercise is not about walking with the right leg. Eh? It's walking with any leg, in any direction, without looking at each other. That's it. One, one. This is what it's about. No fixes. Yeah? You are learning, actually, from normal human being communication that you know already. Let me give you an example. For example, besides the people that are sitting, the people that are standing right now, everybody has perfect balance. Do we agree on that one? Yes. Well, when you start to apply the tango psycho technique, you start to force yourself into positions until you start to lose balance all over the place. Well, tango awareness is to take what you already have and improve it. The natural, normal walking pleasure with the right technique, it expands, it does not shrink. With the right technique applied the right way, it should improve the regular balance you have right now. Except the lazy people that are sitting down. <laughs> Okay, but when you are in the bus and you have perfect balance, well, that's what you should put on one leg. <laughs> See, you're like this, but well, whoa, whoa. See, to be on one leg is not this until you suffer like a, you know, yeah? That is really technique wrongly applied, by the way, okay? So, we have the side thing, so don't look at her. Uh, and let's add up turns. Whoa, this is the turn. When you want to change the turn, you go down and you change. How do you know that you are improving this? Well, because you have to pay less attention and the thing works. Like this. That's it. The more normal you move, it means that you're using normal resources. Like that. If you lose your partner, well, cool down. And then retake it. Yeah? So, don't look at your partner. Walks and turns. Bump. The next exercise we're going to do uh, is... I'm going to show it to you is the following and I suggest you practice it exactly the same way I'm going to show it to you yeah with the same procedure and that is you're walking in any direction with any leg you start a turn we're not dancing we're just opening a door for somebody that means that the lead and follow is right here is out of her body and is out of my body. The lead, what you are leaving, is out of her body. And what you are following is out of your body. That's the main difference. It's not in my chest and it's not in her chest. Yeah? If we are on the street, or, and you open a door to somebody, see, you do this to the outside. This is the gesture to the outside. If she opens the door for me, you don't pass like this, you know? Right? Why? Well, one is crazy, and the other one, functionally, it does not work. And I tell you why. Because your side, see, the usefulness of your side is so you don't bump into things. 
That's for what your sight is. So, what you can see when you are exaggerating, looking at each other, every time a follower does a sidestep like this, they get scared to go and they make it a short one because they are not sure. That's what your body does to you. And that's why movement gets to be stopped when you do weird things with your sight. Your body will stop you because it's not really, really sure. If you walk in this direction and you pretend to look this way, your body naturally will have the tendency to try to stop you from going into that direction. Yeah? So, <clears throat> we are offering the lead outside, the follow is outside, and we say front cross. Front cross. Front cross. Front cross, front sacada, and we walk. To the other side. Front cross. And both of you say it. Front cross. Front cross, front sacada, and we walk. Yeah? What a beginner would do? A beginner that doesn't know will try the front sacada in the first front cross they see. Ah, yeah? So that's not the game. What I want is to set it up. Front cross. Front cross. And in the third, fourth, five front cross, you put any leg, a front sacada on her front cross. You are discovering, you have to discover the resources you have already. And on top of that, we are going to build the technique. And what you, most of you have done is, besides, before knowing anything, you are trying to apply stuff. You are trying to apply stuff before knowing yourself and knowing your normal reactions. That's why every time you push and you're trying to do this, it feels like shit. And it's not pleasurable. Every time you try to have balance in one leg and you do all this thing, it feels like shit. When, when we walk, if we walk like this and we look at each other and we have the connection and the frame and the resistance in the arm and we do all this thing, it feels like shit. And it looks like shit. Yeah? If you don't believe me, do your tango thing, let go, and walk like on the street. And you tell me which one of the two have more pleasure. Ah. This way, these things that I'm saying to you are the things that I test to myself. One time I was dancing, and we were jumping, doing the most complicated thing on earth. <coughs> then I let go, I do this. Wow, and it was a relief. It was a relief. It was more pleasure to walk than to dance. So there, I had to make a choice. What do I do? Do I keep trying with the same technique I was using? That, do I keep dancing or do I go for a walk? <laughs> yeah? So all these techniques is attached to pleasure. And the answer of every question you are asking me, you have it already. Because you know when you feel relief and pleasure, and you don't. Let's add up one little thing, uh, so you can understand how to, uh, how to improve the Sakala parts. And it goes like this. In, in this planet, see, your uh, your balance axis, it always how, has to point where you're going. See? Anything that moves in this planet, for example, if I'm walking and I have to draw my axis of balance, when I'm walking, see, my axis is forward. <coughs> this is when it looks normal, because my axis is where I'm going, too. Okay? 
you can pretend that your axis is perpendicular to the ground and it looks like this. See how it gets to be uncomfortable? Do you see it or not? If you see somebody walking on the street like this, what do you think? <laughs> eh? Right? Mechanically, it's not very efficient. This works at this speed. Does not work at this speed. <laughs> see the problem? So, the faster, you, the faster you want to move, this is very real for women. See, that's why this walk does not work. Because there are certain points that you have to start to use your weight to move your legs. Yeah? So, the whole game is to be able to transit from this to this. Walk. See? You fall first and then you go. Like walking on the street. The first thing we do when we walk on the street is to fall and to walk. Nobody starts on the street to walk like this. Eh? Some women ask, say, well, it's not very natural to walk backwards. Well, <laughs> let me give you this example. If you are in a, in a supermarket and you have your cart, and you get stuck in the line and you have to go back, you know that that woman in the supermarket is a tango dancer if they back up like this, you know? With a shopping cart. Yeah? That's how you can recognize them. But normal people do back up like this. Boom. Why? Because it's more efficient. It's more efficient. Okay. Being that said, we are doing two sakalas, right, for guys. And you guys are already moving at a certain speed, okay? Actually, at a normal walking speed like this, one and two. Most of you are moving at this speed. What does not work is one, two. Because we don't move fast when we do that. What it works is one and two, and we walk. Let me show it to you, Will, uh, Carla. So, you have to incline the axis where you're going, especially if you want to go fast. So this is what it is, one and two. One and two. Yeah? Do you see it? What we are looking for in the first part of the class, and actually in the second, you know, in tango awareness and organic structure, is that you get a lot more movement, a lot more movement, with a lot less effort. A lot of movement with a l l less effort. That usually equals pleasure. A lot of movement with a lot of effort does not pay. Yeah? Just so to remind you what we are looking for. That's why we are doing all this cool down thing. Now, we are going to use the embrace for the first time in this class. And the game is like this. This is how you are going to use it. You get turns. You set up the state of freedom you are looking for, and little by little, little by little, you have to hide it to yourself. You start to squeeze the embrace in, like this. Now squeeze back to put the embrace in. If you feel tensed up, you let go. And the turn has to work exactly the same with the embrace or without. Yes? Okay. So with embrace, we're going to put two sakadas. One and two. And we walk. Then we do it to the other side. If you are building up tension, you let it go. 
and you start to put it little by little, little by little. You can even do this. See? And then we take it. You put two sakadas, one and two, and you walk. And this is uh, the, um, the instruction for the followers right now. If your partner grabs you and pushes you with this hand right here, see? See? It starts to do this. You have the right to scream. Second thing, if your partner starts to do the, the uh, starts to try to sell you that the back cross is difficult, so they start to do all this thing, the first thing they do is grab you, you know, when they start to think like that, the first thing they do is they grab you like this, and they try to do that. When that happens, you have to let go of her. That's it. Yeah? So we are going to do like this. This is the back cross, so you let go. If you fall back, I don't care. Yeah? What I do care is that you don't attach tension to dance. But you attach pleasure to dance. In everything we're doing, we first build up a state of pleasure, flexibility, and then we go for the thing. Let me uh, clarify a little bit uh, what it will be a very, very useful way for you to take this class. And, 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 and my advice for you to get really, really uh, deep meaning and understanding in your body, you have to do the following in this class. Everything you know, everything you think you know, every tango you have done, every modern technique you have used and studied, you take all of that and you throw it down the window. Boom. Yes? And permit yourself to explore something that is new and put yourself in the spot that you don't know anything. And this is a game to learning something that you have no clue. Can we do that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you don't start to try to analyze things that yet you haven't really, really put into your body fully. Yeah? Think about it. To have a basic understanding of what I'm giving you right now about this tango awareness and this organic structure, I truly believe that you need at least a hundred hours of this training to really, really have it in your body and to really, really understand it from your body and not from theory. Of course, I know you understand my explanations from theory, but I want to see that that is a second nature in your body, it takes about a hundred hours to do that. You do a turn, for example, and you lean front cross, from boleo. Front cross, from boleo. Front cross, from boleo. Okay? From cross, from boleo. From cross, from boleo. Yeah? The only difference between the gancho and the boleo is that your leg is hiding on the leg she's standing. Yeah? <laughs> So, uh, okay, the thing is, um, it's very useful information to, to start to see the connections that exist with uh, boleos and ganchos, for example. All of them are steps that are cut in the middle. Remember that one? Okay, so... Another way to think about it is that you are leading a front cross 
and you're, you were going to lead another front cross. But instead of that, you cut it in the middle. You cut it in the middle. And on top of that, you put your leg in. Whoop. To the other side, it's again front cross, gancho, and out. I show the process of how to do it, right? And what did you do? Front cross, you put your leg and you try the first gancho right out of the bat like that. Yeah? Bad boys and girls. Yeah? The way to work it out is, one more time, it is important to understand that the instructions I'm giving you, it has a process. It's not to try it, boom, the first thing. So what you do is, front cross, front boleo. Front cross, front boleo. Front cross, front boleo. And the same thing to the other side. So first, front cross, front boleo. Front cross, front boleo. And then you try your leg and see what happens. Let's start to do boleos, okay? Because <clears throat> boleos have a lot to do, especially with this gancho. Uh, and this gancho gets a little bit stuck because you're using something for boleos and it's not what I use for boleos. And the game goes like this. This is the exercise we're going to do. Yes. She's going to take a back cross. I'm going to do a back sacada with my right leg. Yeah, and then we go to this step, and then we walk out. One more time. So, this is a back cross, front sacada with your right. You get into this position, what we call it, weird mirror, huh? and then we walk out. In real motion, this is what it is. Back sacada, we walk. And if you can, look where you're going. Walk. Just for the exercise. And let's look where we're going. Back cross, rear mirror, and we walk. Let me show you uh, one thing that we're looking for when we're doing this exercise. And the game goes like this. Let me show you the follow, uh, even without her. Look at that. This is what followers are doing a back cross and then a front cross. Okay? All right. If you were not dancing, if you were not dancing and you have to change the direction like that, usually you will take a step, then you will look, you will rotate, and then you'll take the next step. Yeah? So that means that after this step, first you move your hips and then you move your leg out. Most of you are doing exactly the opposite. You are getting into this step, the first thing you move is your leg and then you are trying to do this and then you go with your body. So you are behind your leg, like doing this, you know? First your leg and then you move. Is the most difficult way to move around, especially when the thing takes speed. Yeah? So this is what I want you to do with your partner. You get into this sacada, you open up this side of your hips by yourself, and then you walk. This sacada, you open up the side of your hip, you leave a step right there, and then you walk. It's to the outside. Yes? Do we agree on this one? And I want to see this slow. This, like human beings walk. Boom, and we go. Yeah? Not this. So the game is... Uh, the game goes like this. What I want you to do now is that...
after I, I saw everybody, so what we're doing is that we're building up a state that when you pass right here, you are relaxed. That's what we are building up right now. If you are doing an effort to do that, well, you are practicing something else. Right here, it's not an effort to pass that, and that's why. After you engage into that, then instead of going, you change the direction, and hopefully you get a boleo. Okay? One more time. Yeah. See what we're going to do? So we're going to mix. It could be a pass or it could be a boleo. Whoa. One more time. Whoa. There we go. Let me show you one more time why it's better for you to change your lead and follow to what we are doing right now. To think on steps and to think that the lead is outside of me and outside of her. Especially to do a voleo. Yeah? This, and my lead is offering a space outside of there. And what you want is to send this leg out there in a line. Yeah? That's what you do. And you change directions. And believe me, you generate rotation. Because this leg is not going to go there. I don't know if you know this. Hopefully. <laughs> it's not going to fly out in, in the direction. So you generate rotation from lines to the outside. Instead of generating rotation by grabbing your partner, thinking that there's an axis, and that you have to rotate like this. Why? Because this, it has to do a lot more with choreography than with improvisation. Do you know why? Just picture if you grab somebody on the street and you do this to them, they don't do this. Do you understand? That one. Huh? See? This, this in the world does not mean this. So this is a semi-choreographic way of dancing. <coughs> what is the problem with this and this? The problem is that, as, as you already have passed it through, when you think it's rotation, then the ladies do not know if it's going to be a step or a, a, or a boleo. Did you notice that one? That at the beginning when you wanted a step, your partner was doing a boleo anyway? Did you notice that one or not? Most of you, when you started this exercise, you wanted a step and she was trying to do a boleo anyway. And the boleo was not there. So that's the problem that dancing semi-choreographically have that every time you do this or something similar, you're going to get a voleo. <laughs> yeah? So, one last time uh, for this is that you have to think that there are lines to the outside. That's how you produce rotation. And look at my arms. See? It's a, it's a linear lead. See, I'm not using this to, to create rotation. I'm not doing this. I'm doing it like that, but you know, it's the same thing. If you do this, you know, it's the same stuff. It might look nice to some people, but... So, make sure that both of you, that's why I made her look that way, warm. So you can start to organize your body from up down. Make sure you have a free pass. Make sure you have a free pass. Once you have a free pass, you do another free pass. And eventually, you change direction and you get a boleo. 
Why am I saying this? Because some of you are getting into this position and practicing it this way. And my friend, this is choreography. If you want to, if you want to, the question you have to ask yourself is, why is she lifting her leg up? In my case, she's lifting her leg up because she's engaging herself in taking one step. I go contrary, so you get a super spiral, and this leg gets hooked, and that's the gun. We're going to do an exercise that we did uh, yesterday, that it was called one, two, three, four, front cross. Do you remember that one? Okay. Now for the first time, we're going to practice what is called 100% improvisation. That means that you are dancing, and I will count for you. When I want to, I will say, you're going to be dancing. And I'm going to say, it's going to be her front cross. One, two, three, four, and the, I want to see the whole room do her front cross. Yeah? Then, if we're good, I will count another, I will ask you for another thing, for an open step, for a back cross, for a back volume, for a front volume. Yeah? If you are a real beginner, from one to four, you, have, you do nothing. Yeah? She's on one leg, in whatever leg she is, you set up the front cross, and everybody dances, and you say, one, two, three, four, front cross. This is perfect. Because you're putting front cross in the exact time we're looking for. Let me show you what is not good. One, two, three, four, front cross. Yeah? This is a huge mistake. It will be the same thing as if you have the most beautiful ending of your life. Yeah? And the orchestra already packed their instrument and they're going home. And you do your end. See? It does not count. Because it's out of time. Yeah? So if I was a beginner first class, no problem. One, two, three, four, front cross. And it works. For example, when you see me dancing and I'm like this and looking at each other and blah, blah, blah. See, we are not in love. I'm waiting to put something in the <laughs> Yeah? I'm waiting. Waiting is a very good skill for improvisers to put something in the exact time, yeah? If you are a little bit more advanced, well, you can move a little bit. One, two, three, four, front cross. 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 One, two, three, four, Front cross, one, two, three, four, front cross, one, two, three, four, front cross. Yeah? It could be this advanced and even more. Pick the speed that you can put the front cross very sharp, boom, on time. If it is too fast for you, set it up and wait. One, two, three, four, front cross. One, two, three, four, front cross. Change partners, everybody. Everybody, change partners. And one, two, three, four, front cross. If it is too fast for you, stop running from one to four. <laughs> One, two, three, four, front cross. All right, all right, that's the first one. 
and one, two, three, four, front cross, all right, and one, two, three, four, front cross. This exercise goes like this. I make you to change partners because I don't know if you if you notice that when you change partners and you grab a new one, you are in a hurry, right? Do we agree? Yeah. It's like you are in a hurry, and the first thing everybody does when you are in a hurry, what you are doing is you are running faster. You get your new partner and you start. And then of course when four comes, you cannot hit it, right? So when you change partners. The first thing you do is you stop and you figure out which leg she's on. That's it. So we do change partners and I'm saying one, two, three, four, front cross. Yeah? See how we can be the simplest thing on this planet this time. I'm always speeding up because I'm forcing you to slow yourself down. That's where we're doing change partners. Yeah? So when you are in a hurry, you go for what you have to be looking for it, and that is which leg is she on? And that's the game. Okay? So you better slow down yourself, because if not, this exercise will go so fast <laughs> eh? that you won't believe it. One, two, three, four, front cross. Yeah, okay. So keep dancing, keep dancing, keep your partner. Now it's going to be a back cross. It's going to be a back cross. So that is one, two, three, four, Back cross. Yeah. Three, four, open step. Two, three, four, open step. Change partners. And one, two, three, four, open step. What we are practicing right now, what we are practicing right now are pure, pure, pure. 100% improvisational skills. And let me re refresh this to you. If you do this, one, two, three, four, front cross, open step, and then you do this, well, it's double wrong. It's double wrong. If you get stubborn and you didn't hit it in time and you do it anyways, is double wrong. It's exactly the same thing as you have your ending, the orchestra left, and you don't care, and you wah, and put it in. Nobody claps. <coughs> Nobody does this. Actually, they do, ooh, <laughs> right? At least, if you didn't hit it in time, don't do anything. You know? If I said it, one, two, three, four, front cross, open step, don't do anything. And one, two, three, four, front cross, open step. Ah. And one, two, three, four, front cross, open step. One, two, three, four, front cross, open step. With two front sacadas. With two front sacadas. That is one, two, three, four, front cross, open step. Yeah. One, two, three, four, Front cross, open step. But this is how it goes. Yeah? 
you're, you're going to have your partner in front of you, like this. You take one step in this direction, the second step, and you leave your right leg right there. Right here, yeah, you start to turn this way. I'm going to stay on one leg. When she takes the open step, yeah, that's my gancho. We get out, and then we walk out the same direction we were taking. Let me show it to you from this side. So it's one step, two. You leave your right leg, but you keep turning to generate a normal turn. That's the gancho in, leg out, home free. Let me show you, because in the room we have different versions of the gancho. Uh, and like in any class, you know, or like in any family, you know? Nobody wants to do the same thing. Uh, exactly the same thing. But the game that we're going to learn, and we are going to apply for all the ganchos we've learned on this class and the one that we're going to learn tomorrow, is like this. There are ganchos, all, almost all ganchos, can be done in two major different ways. One way, I call it a three actions gancho. And the way I showed it is a two actions gancho. And let me show you what the difference is. What I'm doing when I'm walking is that this next step that she's going to take, I am putting it already on top of my leg. So my leg is already in. So the action is up and out. The older way of doing ganchos is, you are like here, okay, you're doing this, this, the open step, you put it to your outside, far away from, I'm exaggerating, okay? Nobody did this. But it's outside, so it's a three action. You have to get in, you have to go up, and you have to get out. Yeah? It is possible, but it's a lot of work, three actions. Let me show it to you. When she's turning, this is three actions. One, two, three. If I was not dancing with her, right, and get ahí, and I'll show it to you, it looks like this, you know? And it's the way up. The other one, it looks like this. Yeah? That's why it looks a lot smoother to do a two action thing. Plus, there's zero risk of hitting her. Because the, 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 uh, when sometimes we hit her legs, it's because you are outside of her step. If this is a step, you are outside and you get in like that. If this open step, let me show it to you, this one. If this open step, you put it on top of your leg, there's no way for this action to hit her leg. Okay? So, the thing to remember is that you do this and this, and you have to rotate her so much that your leg has to be on the other side of her step. Show this to yourself, then do the gancho and then you go home. Let me show it to you this side. It's like this. One step, two, we rotate so much that the only thing I'm doing is this. Way out, home free. Dun, dun. Yes? Analyze it. Try it very, very slowly. One thing, let, let me clarify just one thing to you that it has to do a lot with tango awareness. Uh, I do happen to believe and see and experience that we human beings, we communicate, for example, uh, with muscle tension or muscle release. And that really is a lot more powerful, a lot more powerful than any dance technique you have learned so far. Or tension or release. When you tense up, 
It means you are not passing through. Yeah? If a dog is coming at you and you do this, it means you are not passing through. That's how we communicate the whole time. Okay? When you're doing, a, for example, a turn like this, it's not your position that leads. Because if you do this, normal human beings stop. Even if you're pretending the tango thing. This does not lead human beings. Only tango dancers <laughs> train into this code. What leads human beings is you can pass, you cannot. This cause I'm talking, you know, even a dog understands, the horse understands it. If you don't believe me, go to a club tonight, grab the biggest bouncer you can find and do this to him. <laughs> yeah? And you realize what it means to do that to somebody. Well, tango is not different than life, at least in the form I dance it. Okay. So. Let's apply it to this gancho thing. When you're going into this direction, yeah, the main thing you want is that she keeps walking in one line without any interruption. So, if for to do the gancho with this side, you tense it up, yeah, the person is following you is not going to go willingly to where you want it to be, but she will try to go to the outside of you because she's perceiving that there is an obstacle. So usually she goes to the outside. So from this side is that when you are walking and you, are, you want her to really pass on top of this line, this half of your body, it has to be the sweetest thing on earth. It has to be invisible, tension-wise, so she can pass <coughs> like that. Let me show you the contrary example is this. You can force it, eh? But see that she doesn't want to walk? All right. So, your gancho is the same thing. Yeah? Don't do a gancho with extra muscle thing because guess what your follower is going to stop if you do that why, why do you think it is is we have to get rid of this because when we want this gancho if this gets static and shrink the next step it will be to my outside and not as it should be to the inside of me and these two shoulders should be super together. If these two shoulders are together, these legs are together. If we have the death lock and these two shoulders are separated, these two legs are separated, so it starts to become the famous hit. This gancho is famous because of this kick. <laughs> okay? So. The two main things, the death lock, you get rid of it, so the embrace circulates, oh, the shoulders together, and this half of your body has to be super soft. Let me show you the gancho we did uh, yesterday, just to clarify the example. Uh, if it is a two action gancho, for example, we're going to do, by the way, this gancho. Walk. Yeah? Do we agree? Okay. So, if I'm standing right here, I'm, I'm putting her step on top of my leg. And that's the gancho. All of you yesterday were doing a step and you were going for it like this to the outside. <laughs> Do you see the difference? That's why when you do this a lot of times, usually they do a boleo to you instead of the gancho. Why? 
Because the in wire mechanism of human beings is that if she's on one leg and she, see, she sees me traveling this way, this generates the strongest lead in the planet. <laughs> it doesn't matter what fantasy you have about the living is this. It doesn't matter if you move this generous direction. The best way to try this is with complete beginners. Because beginners don't share your fantasy about what living and following is. And they really follow you. <laughs> what you are really living. So they will follow your muscle tension, your offering states and where you move, which are, and which step, which spots you take, which are the three or four major, major, major living uh, items for human sensitive human beings. Yeah? This not only works into this dance, it works in life. If she's standing there, for example, and I'm waiting for the bus and I do this, you know, this leads. Do you, do you see why? So the gantry is the same thing. If you put your leg and you pretend that you're living with the connection, you know, if you do this, she goes there. Being that said, I want to thank Pia, Miguel. Yeah. And Doña Carla Marano. Yeah. Uh, and Angeles that left uh, early. And Doña Carla.